Can you make grains in your rice cooker? Should we conduct an experiment? Let's try it. So I was getting ready to make myself some lunch and I thought I'd bring you along on the adventure. Let's try that again without the cell phone going off. So I thought, well, grains, rice is a grain. Why can't I cook my barley, bulgur, and farro in my rice cooker? I've already cooked my uh, quinoa in there before completely successfully. Just have to know the ratio of the water. So I have these quick cooking grains and it's uh, barley, bulgur, and farro. And they all have the exact same temperature settings or length of time and the same water to grain ratio. So I'm going to pop them all in my rice cooker and then go do my thing and then come back and have lunch. So right here I have a cup and a half of water. I'm going to add about a teaspoon of this vegetable base to it and whisk it with my giant whisk. Yes, I know. Silly, but it's true. And then add a quarter cup of each of the grains. Now, the cooking instructions for each of these grains is three quarter cup to a quarter cup of um, grain. I have a cup and a half, so that's only for two of them. Then I'll do the three quarter cup separately of just plain water. So, yeah, I'll show you the next step. Because I was afraid for this to get too salty, I just grabbed a little bit of this um, Better Than Bullion starter and then whisked it into the water, which is the cup and a half of water, so that's two portions worth. I have my bulgur farro and barley in. It's a quarter cup of each, and I'm going to add the liquid and then one more three quarter cup of water. The so liquid has been added, now the last of the last three quarter cup and I'm going to stir this with my rice spoon paddle pop the lid push the button we'll come back when the alarm goes off and I'm going to serve it probably with some leftovers from last night, and this is sautéed Swiss chard with garlic, apple cider vinegar, and craisins. I just heard the ding, so let's open up and, and see. Whew. Smells good. Let's taste. Mmm. Perfectly cooked. I'm going to unplug it because I don't need it to be on warm. In the meantime, while this is cooking, oh my gosh, that's so good. I prepped kind of the traditional ingredients for tabbouleh. So I'm going to make tabbouleh out of those grains. And I have my um, Swiss chard warmed up. Just going to zest some lemon. I'm going to um, squeeze the lemon over the hot grains because they will absorb flavor is that much faster or better. As a quick tip, I zested the lemon and then squeezed it and caught all the seeds. I don't want to have to pull out another tool to do the job. So now I'm going to mix this up, taste it for salt and pepper because I remember I cooked it in a little bit of the flavored water with the veggie broth starter. That is delicious, um, but I'm going to add a little bit of za'atar, green za'atar, into it, maybe with this fork. And mix it up and taste it. There it is, all served up, so tasty. And I have a side of my leftovers. Oh, so, so good. It'll probably be even better once it cools completely and the flavors have a chance to marry. But, oh... It is delicious. And as you saw, super easy. No pots to babysit. Easy peasy. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Otherwise, if you want some if you want to leave me some suggestions for future cooking episodes, by all means, I'm open to ideas. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, everyone.